We are reading A Course in Miracles. We're on chapter 13. This is called The Guiltless World, this chapter. And this section is section 9. And this section is called The Cloud of Guilt. Guilt remains the only thing that hides the father, for guilt is the attack upon his son. The guilty always condemn, and having done so, they will still, con still condemn, linking the future to the past, as is the ego's law. Fidelity to this law lets no light in, for it demands fidelity to darkness and forbids awakening. The ego's laws are strict and breaches are severely punished. Therefore, give no obedience to its laws, for they are laws of punishment, and those who follow them believe that they are guilty, and so they must condemn. Between the future and the past, the laws of God must intervene if you would free yourself. Atonement stands between them like a lamp shining so brightly that the chain of darkness in which you bound yourself will disappear. Release from guilt is the ego's whole undoing. Make no one fearful, for his guilt is yours, and by obeying the ego's harsh commandments, you bring its condemnation on yourself. And you will not escape the punishment it offers those who obey it. The ego re rewards fidelity to it with pain, for faith in it is pain. And faith can be re rewarded only in terms of the belief in which the faith was placed. Faith makes the power of belief and where it is invested determines its reward. For faith is always given what is treasured, and what is treasured is returned to you. The world can give you only what you gave it, for being nothing but your own projection, it has no meaning apart from what you found in it and placed your faith in. Be faithful unto darkness and you will not see, because your faith will be rewarded as you gave it. You will accept your treasure, and if you place your faith in the past, the future will be like it. Whatever you hold dear you think is yours. The power of your valuing will make it so. Atonement brings a reevaluation of everything you cherish, for it is the means by which the Holy Spirit can separate the false and the true, which you have accepted into your mind without distinction. Therefore, you cannot value one without the other, and guilt has become as true for you as innocence. You do, not see, you do not believe the Son of God is guiltless because you see the past and see him not. When you condemn a brother, you are saying, I who was guilty choose to remain so. You have denied his freedom and by, doing, and by so doing you have denied the witness unto yours. You could as easily have freed him from the past and lifted from his mind the cloud of guilt that binds him to it and in his freedom would have been your own. Lay not his guilt upon him, for his guilt lies in his secret thought that he has done this unto you. Would you then teach him he is right in his delusion? The idea that the guiltless son of God can attack himself and make himself guilty is insane. In any form, in anyone, believe this not. For sin and condemnation are the same, and the belief in one is faith in the other, calling for punishment instead of love. Nothing can justify insanity, and to call for punishment upon yourself must be insane. See no one then as guilty, and you will affirm the truth of guiltlessness unto yourself. In every condemnation that you offer the Son of God lies the conviction of your own guilt. If you would have the Holy Spirit make you free of it, accept his offer of atonement for all your brothers. For, as, for, so you, <clears throat> for so you learn that it is true for you. Remember always that it is impossible to con condemn the Son of God in part. Those whom you see as guilty become the witnesses to guilt in you, and you will see it there, for it is there until it is undone. Guilt is always in your mind, which has condemned itself. Project it not, for while you do, it cannot be undone. With everyone whom you release from guilt, great is the joy in heaven, where the witnesses to your fatherhood rejoice. Guilt makes you blind, for while you see one spot of guilt within you, you will not see the light. And by projecting it, <clears throat> the world seems dark and shrouded in your guilt. You throw a dark veil over it and cannot see it because you cannot look within. 
You are afraid of what you would see there, but it is not there. The thing you fear is gone. If you would look within, you would see only the atonement shining in quiet and in peace upon the altar to your father. Do not be afraid to look within. The ego tells you all is black with guilt within you and bids you not to look. Instead, it bids you look upon your brothers and see the guilt in them. Yet this you cannot do without remaining blind. For those who see their brothers in the dark and guilty in the dark in which they shroud them are too afraid to look upon the light within. Within you is not what you believe is there and what you put your faith in. Within you is the holy sign of perfect faith your father has in you. He does not value as you as you do. He knows himself and knows the truth in you. He knows there is no difference, for he knows not of differences. Can you see guilt where God knows there is perfect innocence? You can deny his knowledge, but you cannot change it. Look then upon the light he placed within you and learn that what you feared was there has been replaced with love. This section is called The Cloud of Guilt. So, in a way, this is... This is the closest that the Course comes to talking about the idea of Maya, <clears throat> which is this, uh, you know, the Hindu um, uh, term for the veil of illusion. So, but, but the Course is saying, you know, the, the Course puts emphasis on guilt, which you do not find as much in other teachings, including Hinduism. And it's basically Jesus is saying, you know, he, he put it very clearly here. I'll read, I'll read this to you. Um, when you condemn a brother, you are saying, I who was guilty choose to remain so. See no, <clears throat> see no one as guilty, and you will affirm the truth of guiltlessness unto yourself. In every condemnation that you offer the Son of God lies the conviction of your own guilt. So, <clears throat> as long as we project, that's what the ego does, as long as we project outward our own guilt onto others, and we condemn and we blame, we we see ourselves that way. We don't know that we're doing that. We don't realize. That's why Jesus or someone like Jesus has to come and point it out to us. The ego projects and love or spirit um, extends. Love can only extend itself. Ego can only extend itself. It can only project itself. And the reason it projects is because of, of this fear, the fear to look within. Because, because according to the ego, if you look within yourself, you will, you will see how horrible you are, <laughs> how, how guilty. And Jesus is assuring, assuring us that if we, if we actually look within ourselves, we will find the atonement. The atonement is this principle, which is that separation from God is impossible. Separation never happened. We are not separate from God and we have never been separate from God. And that is, is not at all possible. That's the atonement principle. And the, and, and which means that the ego is nothing. The ego does not exist. The cloud of guilt is is made up of nothing, you know, cotton candy. <laughs> um, the sun has always been shining. God has, is, has always been, always will be, um, is, is the forever present, forever present love, ever present love. So, um, and that is our true nature. And the, but the ego's version is our true nature is that we are guilty. We are guilty, sinful, 
and we should be fearful and we should be we should fear punishment because that's what we deserve and and to the extent that we project that outside of ourselves onto the world in whatever form we do that is the extent to which we will we will um believe that and everything is up to you know once once jesus comes or a teaching like this comes and and provides an alternative we realize we start to realize we have a choice we may not have completely realized it before um the course speaks with an authority that you cannot deny is it true well that's you know that only you can decide that atonement brings a reevaluation of everything you cherish for it is the means by which the holy spirit can separate the false and the true which you have accepted into your mind without distinction so until um we have a teaching like this we find it hard to separate what is true from what is false. But once we have a teaching like this that puts it all so simple and so clear, it becomes much, much easier to separate what is false from what is true, what is real from what is, what is unreal from what is real. We can, we can see it much more clearly. Um, anything that speaks of separation is unreal. Anything in, anything that undergoes any kind of change is unreal. Anything that is permanent, and the only truly permanent thing is love, is, is real and is for always and all time. Beyond all time, actually. Um, <clears throat> so... Let's, let's read further on this. Um, guilt has become as true for you as innocence. You do not believe the Son of God is guiltless because you see the past and see him not. So we, we can only see, we, we only tend to, to see things in terms of past, present, future. Linear time. We cannot see that the present is all that truly is, the eternal present. That is that is very um, very strange, a very strange concept for us. Very hard, hard to wrap our minds around. But if we could live in the present, in that present moment, present time, in the present moment where everything is is beautiful, perfect, whole. We are, we, we are free of guilt. There's, there's no past. If we could live there and we could, and we could see others in that way, we would free ourselves. Not that it wouldn't take a, a lot of work because it's very difficult to let go of the past. Very, very difficult. Not impossible. <laughs> But it's very difficult to to think I'm not horrible for what I've done in the past, and I can never. I need to be punished, and I need to be. I I I, you know, I'm not going to get away with what I did, and I should suffer. I should feel bad. I should feel guilty, forever, <laughs> basically. You know, we don't really look at it in that way, generally, unless we start to really look at it. But that's what it comes down to, is I can never be happy. And, you know, in saying I can never be happy, no one else really can be happy either. Or or maybe some, some other people can be happy, but I should not be happy. You, you may you may even think, well, there are some people that are not sinful. There are not some people that have not make, made these. They don't have the same problems that I have. I'm special <laughs> in my. But the reality is, is no, 
everyone, we're all in the same boat. We are all in the same boat. Um, if, and so if I can, if I can release myself, I can, I can release others. And if I can see others as in that same boat as me, and that no one is really immune to this, then I can forgive myself. And I can, and I can start to say, yeah, I, I, I did things in the past that I'm not proud of, that I'm not, you know, I've, I've done this, 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 <laughs> too many things. Um, but the reality is, is that, that everyone, everyone has these thoughts that you have. Everyone has done things, said things, done things that are not um, of the highest. Maybe some people have done less, but maybe it's because they have been, uh, they've already learned these lessons to some extent. Maybe not the fullest extent, but they've learned to some extent. And so they, they're not making the same mistakes that you've made. But that doesn't matter because it all comes down to where are you on your own journey? And on your journey, you can, you can start by, by, by saying, by just being open to the possibility that you do not have to live with the guilt, the shame, um, and all the things that go with that the depression, the loneliness, the, um, the hopelessness, the meaninglessness. You don't have to live with that. That is a choice, especially when you, when something like this is presented to you, it can quicken the process if you allow it to, because it helps you to, 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 to see a little bit more clearly what we're talking about. It, it brings it up to, to consciousness. It makes what was unconscious conscious a little bit more. And you, you know, a lot of people are not even aware of the extent to which they, to which guilt is running their life, guilt and fear and sin. And this, this kind of teaching can really help. And I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you for listening. Uh, we're we're going to continue. Release from guilt. I want to say one more thing. Release, re, uh, the next section is called Release from Guilt. But I want to say one more thing. Jesus makes a, a point to say that you can't get there until, until the guilt is completely gone. That's a tall order. Um, but you will have help. There can't be one spot of guilt. There can't be one spot of darkness. Otherwise, you won't see what Jesus is saying. But you will be helped in the process. You will see. Just take, take the necessary baby steps, and you will see. Thank you.